Hi, my name is Bobby Breyer, FAE for LMI Technologies. Today, we're going to be conducting an unboxing and setup video for the 2670 Wide Field of View Blue Laser Line Profiler. And here we have a Master 810. This is our timing and synchronization device. So when you have a multi-sensor system and you want them to be acting in, synchronous, in a synchronous manner, you will need one of these devices. So we have four sensor boxes, a GOMAX, NX, and our cables. There we go, let's start opening these boxes. All right, there's our first 2670. And we're gonna go in detail opening this up just to show you what's in it. First is a card indicating the type of packaging we use. This is EcoSmart packaging. Everything is recyclable. The sensor itself is wrapped in wax paper. We can see that the laser emitter has a sticker on it to prevent injury. And we have two dust covers for the IO and power connections. You generally wanna keep your sensors co-located with the box they came in. And that's because the box has a sensor serial number, serial number on it, which makes it easy to keep track of everything. There is a factory inspection certificate indicating the part number, serial number, laser class, the firmware it was validated with, and who certified it and when. Well, now we've opened our GOMAX device, which is an edge accelerator, and here's our accessories box. So let's go through this. This looks like a SSD holder. This is our power supply. And you can see we have a Phoenix connector here in case you want to use your own. This supports 12 to 24 volts. This looks like a panel connector. Here's a DIN rail connector. Another Phoenix connector in case you don't want to cannibalize the one it came with. Uh, looks like a rack connector and a quick start guide. And here's the GOMAX NX itself. So here's the power supply some ports that you won't be using for the GOMAX NX in its current configuration. On the other end here, we have Ethernet 1 and 2, which you'll use for connecting to the sensors and using, you can use one to connect to the sensors and the other to connect to an industrial network if you want to isolate your network from the um, GOKater network. And that's pretty much it. And here are our cables. So these are our high flex cables. We have a connector on one end and a split connector on the other. So one end is a power and sync cable and it'll be labeled as, labeled as such. And the other is an ethernet cable. So let's go ahead and open these up. And that just about does it. So let's lay these out so we can see everything. Here's everything that came in the package. And I'll add in our power supply. Now what we need that isn't included is an ethernet switch, a power supply, and a computer. Now that we have our sensors set up, we're ready to begin configuring the system. Let's start by going to the Discover tab. It looks like all of our sensors are available. Let's go ahead and add our sensors as a new sensor. We'll select them all and we'll configure them as a sensor group. I've previously gone through and written down the sensor positions and orientations in order to make this step as easy as possible. On the top left, 035, top right, 798. Let's switch that. Bottom left, 786. The last one goes here. Since the sensors are a ring in a ring, I want to mi minimize crosstalk as much as possible. So I'm going to enable multiplexing and put the corners on diagonals on the same bank. Great. Now the sensors are ready to be aligned. But first, let's check our scan to see if they're in view. And it looks like they're not. All we see is a little bit of noise. And it's likely because our sensors, which are class two, are, have too low of an exposure to properly characterize our alignment target. Let's bump this up to something a little more reasonable. And it looks like we're still having some trouble visualizing that. So let's take a look at what the imager is seeing. And if we zoom in, we see that we're doing okay on one side, but the other side needs a little bit more time to collect that light. Let's increase it to 1500 microseconds. 
Not quite there. It looks like we still need some more. Go to 3,000 microseconds. It's looking better. Much better. Let's go to sensor one. Do the same thing. Sensor two. And sensor three. There we go. Now let's look at the output for each one. We'll disable uniform spacing. Enable acquire intensity. And we should see nice, clear, crisp corners for each sensor. Let's go to the alignment tab and align the sensors so that they're in the same coordinate system. We're going to do a stationary polygon alignment. And my target, which I pre previously measured, has a height of 101.5 millimeters and a width of 101.66 millimeters. So we'll start with that. I'm going to configure the top left sensor first, which is top zero sensor zero. Your alignment goes clockwise from the starting position. So in this case, I'm starting with the top left sensor. And let's click next. And it looks like the scanning was complete. Let's check out our output. I'm gonna rotate the target just to make sure everything is in phase. Much better. Next, we'll set up our target of interest. Our target's in the field of view. Let's get started with scanning. First, I have to set up my parameters for my linear mover. Great. Let's go to the scan tab, change triggering to encoder, and we'll change our spacing to about a half millimeter. And let's take a look. There's our pedestal holding our wood. Let's try this again in surface space mode so we can get uh, a view of what this looks like in a point cloud. I'm gonna enable recording, click run. Now every 100 millimeters, this will create a surface for me. We can also change that parameter and create surfaces whenever we wish. So let's change it to 700 millimeters and see how big of a surface we can get. I'm going to clear the replay buffer, click run, and here we go. So we'll stop the sensor and just take a look at what we have. I'm going to disable points to improve performance. This tree looks good. And we have the intensity view, which shows us what the imager is seeing and a height map, or point cloud in this case, that shows us what the inferred height is. And that concludes our demo of a ring layout on a large log, or a small log, rather. <laughs>